Yay. Hello and welcome to another episode of Alter Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter. And I'm your co-host, Dr. Susanna Alter. And this is your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. And we're so excited to dive into something that is really near and dear to both of our hearts today. And that is the topic of eating. <laughs> yes, eating. And the title of today's episode is, Are You Eating Enough? Because believe it or not, one of the most common issues we find in our clients and our patients' eating habits is that they are not eating enough. They're simply not eating enough calories. And maybe you relate. Maybe you know someone in your life who you feel like doesn't eat very much food, and yet maybe they're still holding on to a lot of excess weight. Maybe they're stuck in a chronic illness. And so we're going to talk about really, you know, how much food your body really needs in order to heal itself. But before we do, we want to share <laughs> with you our newest offering, which is available for a limited time because we are hosting a live cleanse starting September 23rd, I believe, is the first meeting. It's a three-week cleanse. However, only about 12 of the days are specifically focused on cleansing. And speaking of eating enough, this cleanse is a food-based cleanse, which means that you eat as much as you want, eat, eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full, and eating the foods that support your body in cleansing, detoxing, and healing. So that's what we are doing starting September 23rd. Clean the, this program is just now open for registration. So go over to www. Actually, not www. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's just community.alter.health slash fall dash cleanse. And you can sign up today and join us starting September 23rd. Included is six live meetings. And if you don't make the live meetings, we've got the, um, we've got the recordings available for you, as well as all of the, the program, the schedule of events, the, the foods to eat, the foods to avoid, and all sorts of guidance and support along the way. Yeah, lots of recipes and also access to the private Facebook group where all of the participants can type in their questions, support each other along the way. And there will be daily emails in addition to the six uh, live calls an hour each uh, throughout the course of those three weeks. Yeah, so our intention is really, really to provide a supported cleanse and like ben said the cleanse is in several different phases so we ease you into i'm not sure that i said that but thanks for saying that. oh yeah so <laughs> we actually ease you in um to different levels of detoxifying ways of eating but you will be eating the whole way through yeah so uh... teaser 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 <laughs> alert this is going to be a whole food plant-based cleanse lots of fruits and vegetables Yes. So that is the what we're getting into. And without further ado on the topic of cleansing, specifically, we're going to talk about eating in general. Yes. And I know some of you out there might think that the title of this episode is a little weird because you look at our country, you see the epidemic of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and you think, isn't the issue that people are eating too much? And yes, in certain cases, yes, there is a, a chronic epidemic of overfeeding but undernourishing. Um, but for the population we're talking about today, we're really talking about those who are very mindful about what they're putting in their bodies and almost too mindful you know they're 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 not putting enough into their bodies yeah and i have i think we both have an intimate connection and relationship with this question are you eating enough for about three or four years of my life i was a vegan i was a plant-based vegan i was very conscious of what i was putting in my body I, for about six or eight months of those three or four years, I was also mainly raw vegan. I was kind of gung-ho about it and I was feeling really great, but then I just slowly got depleted. And this is such a common thing that exists among 
people who choose to eat a plant-based diet. Feel really good, reverse disease, lower cholesterol, all of the benefits that a plant-based diet promotes. But then at some point, it's not uncommon for people to hit a wall. And the most common reason for this simply comes down to the fact that they are not eating enough. That was the case for me. That's the, been the case for so many people that we've worked with. It's because when we are fueling our bodies properly, the way that nature intended, our metabolism actually burns that fuel so efficiently that it leaves us, you know, it leaves the engine kind of dry and empty oftentimes. So we need to continuously, continuously, continuously <laughs> replenish ourselves. So that's really what we're talking about today. Exactly, exactly. So we're really talking to those people out there who are, you know, healthy eaters, they're mindful eaters, and they want to do the best for their body. But we want to bust through some myths about the amounts of food. I mean, I think we'll even talk about the C word today, which is calories, which we actually haven't really talked about calories all that much. We don't like to talk about calories all that much because we don't want to encourage people to count calories or even macronutrients or anything like that. We just want you to eat real food. But, you know, calories are a helpful tool sometimes, especially for us when we are trying to assess whether our clients and patients are getting enough fuel that their cells and their bodies need to heal. Yeah. And there's this old equation that people live by calories in versus calories out. And if you want to gain weight, you eat more calories than you are burning. If you want to lose weight, you eat less calories than you're burning. You know, that rule is actually not that accurate. A lot of people restrict calories and still gain weight. And they do that because the food that they are eating, the calories that they are eating are not being metabolized properly. The fuel is not being burned to create cellular energy. Instead, that fuel is being stored on the body as excess weight. Yeah. So Ben, because that was pretty complex. Can you explain what circumstances that happens in when fat gets stored on the body? Yeah, this this really comes down to the the you know the the fact of the matter is metabolic health or metabolic efficiency or you know metabolic disturbance or disruption. A lot of people have dysregulated metabolism that leads to you know someone just not being able to you know, not being very efficient at converting fuel to energy. You know, their mitochondria are dysfunctional or their insulin receptors are dysfunctional. Somewhere along the line of putting food in our mouth and then use and then creating cellular energy from that food, somewhere along the line, there's a roadblock and the food goes in the mouth, but the cellular energy isn't created. Instead, the food that goes in the mouth is somewhat broke down. Sure, we're creating some amount of cellular energy, we're surviving but a lot of that energy is actually being stored in the body, usually in the form of fat. Crazy. So what you're saying is that people are not actually getting all of the benefit of the energy within the food that they're eating. A lot of it is not actually going through the process of cellular metabolism and energy production, and it's being stored elsewhere on their body. Correct. So what, what gets in the way of that process? What are some examples? Well, there's a few things. There could be mineral deficiencies or vitamin deficiencies that lead to mitochondrial dysfunction or pathogens and infections that lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. Or there could be too much fat, too, much, too many toxic oils and fats that are disrupting insulin signaling. Uh, you know, any number of things or chronic dehydration that just slows the metabolic process as well. Or, you know, thyroid function probably even, or inactivity. You know, if you're sitting on the couch all day, your metabolism is slow. If you're just walking around is enough, just, you know, moving the body slightly, gently is enough to increase the metabolism and actually put that fuel to use. But the most common thing, and I think the thing that we would like to focus on is really uh, the matter of eating the proper foods. Because when we're eating the proper foods, our metabolism regulates itself. And by proper foods, we're, we're talking about whole foods, 
naturally occurring in their natural forms. And whole foods meaning plants, fruits and vegetables and whole grains, nuts and seeds and legumes and herbs and spices and water that is rich in minerals or juice that is rich in minerals to wash it all down. Great, great. Okay, so, so far we've made the point that it's really not as simple as calories in, calories out. Um, it really depends on the health of your metabolism and your cell's ability to convert that food, that glucose into energy. Yeah, what we see time and time again is that people eat more and they weigh less. They eat more to lose weight. We see it all the time. And some people, when they start eating properly, they start metabolizing properly. And therefore, they start burning the fuel that they're putting into their mouth. And weight just naturally comes off. Right. Right. So... And, and people are amazed, but it's just kind of a, a natural consequence byproduct of fueling ourselves the way that nature intended humans to thrive. Right. And I want today's topic not only to be about weight, because weight, you know, we always say weight is a byproduct of a person's health. So really what I want to talk about, what I want to focus on today is fueling the body with enough food to heal. Yeah, because we think <laughs> about we think about energy and calories and burning calories in order to like exercise, in order to think clearly and be awake and be active in our lives but also that cellular energy that is created every moment of every day throughout the course of your life is the energy that is necessary, essential for your body to heal. Mm -hmm. So restricting calories is equal to restricting health, restricting healing, restricting energy that's required for these natural healing processes to be carried out. Exactly. So it's not common for Dr. Benjamin and I to run a kind of dietary assessment on our clients and patients and see them eating anywhere between like 800 and, you know, 1400 or 1600 calories a day. Yeah. And um, I mean, 800 is really low, but there are people out there who are only eating about 800 calories. And it might not just be because they are concerned about their food intake. It might also be because they have symptoms that prevent them from eating large amounts or their appetite is a little dysregulated mm -hmm. and they just don't have the drive to eat. Um, and, and those are all things that we certainly work with uh, to optimize. But really, you know, if we were to name a number of a goal that people should kind of strive for for their energy intake it's different for every person yeah, it's of course. hard to, it's hard to pick a number and just broadly apply it to the general pop population but for example the... me and you Susanna we exercise usually at least an hour fairly vigorously each day and we're pretty active aside from that and we eat at least 3,000 usually close to 3,500 or 4,000 calories a day or 2,500 it depends, it depends. 3,000 <laughs> at least maybe it's 20 you know maybe tw like baseline 2,500 for me baseline 3,000 for Ben but maybe, yeah. but anyway I mean if from more kind of an objective point of view which it's like okay where does this even come from anyway but the world health organization recommends that all adult females get at least 2000 calories a day and that men get i don't know 2200 or something like that yeah and so you know that's also yeah like i said before okay where are they getting their numbers from right because everyone's different well everyone's got a basal metabolic rate exactly and it's the rate that you know the calories that their body is burning when they are just sitting and not doing anything. Yeah, sitting and healing if they need to heal. So anyway, my argument would be that for those people who are going through chronic illness, they actually need they need more of yeah, more absolutely. of the, you know, more food but only more of the right foods, not more yeah. foods that are going to contribute to illness. So this is really common. A lot of people hear what we're saying and they think, okay, maybe I'm not eating enough. Maybe I'm not eating enough calories. So people go to oils, you know, coconut oil, slather it on, butter, slather it on, olive oil, slather it on, or people go to a handful of nuts because that's going to be a few hundred calories, or people go to an egg or people go to Lots of avocados. avocados or other calorically dense foods. 
But really what we are pointing people towards over and over again all the time is more starchy, calorically dense fruits and vegetables, things like dates and bananas, potatoes Mango. and mangoes and winter squashes yeah. if you and can beans and, and if you can tolerate whole, grains whole grains mm -hmm. uh, so because the reason why we're pointing people towards these starchier foods is because they are rich in glucose the building block of starch which is the preferred fuel source by every cell of your body so if we're just filling ourselves with a handful of nuts that's going to meet our caloric needs, but it's not going to provide the energy production needs that our body needs to thrive. Yes. Like what Ben was saying earlier, when we eat simply too, too many fats, whether it's from animal products or not, you know, if we're eating too many nuts, that's also going to be a burden on our metabolic process. So mm -hmm. like we said before, you're actually not going to be able to get all of the energy that is locked up in those nuts if you just yeah. Pound them in. Pound them in. in <laughs> unless, of course, you know, you are exercising vigorously and, you know, you're able to access that energy storage. But for most people, most of the time, even if you're exercising vigorously, you should be eating starchier foods to create that cellular energy. Right. You know, the reason why maybe hikers or backpackers or you know, endurance athletes go towards nuts or trail mix or something like that is just because it's calorically dense, dense. They don't need to fill their backpack with potatoes and beans and things that are heavier and take up more space. So, but you know, if our goal is healing, we want to eat the late, the less calorically dense, the more nutrient dense, the starchier fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And what we see when people turn to this, I'll just say, I'll call it a whole food plant-based, lo relatively low fat diet. A whole food plant-based diet is naturally low in fat. Unless you're eating lots and lots of nuts yeah. and avocados and coconuts. Um, when people switch to this diet, because they heal, their weight will normal, it'll normalize, it'll settle where the body wants that weight to be. So if you're underweight, you will gain some weight. If you're overweight, you will lose that weight because- Your met metabolism will heal and, uh, and regulate itself. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think a lot of people who are underweight see people losing weight on this diet and say, oh, no, 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 I can't eat that way because I'll just lose more weight. But the truth is you yeah. will actually gain weight mm -hmm. um, because you'll be healing. And yeah. That's so true. One more thing that is coming to my mind that I wanted to talk about in this conversation is the, the fact um, that the phenomenon of eating out at restaurants as a whole food plant-based, we'll call it vegan, individual you know we get gypped big time when we're eating out at a restaurant because if you think about a hamburger with uh you know quarter pound uh you know beef patty and a big thing of cheddar cheese and a couple slices of bacon and lettuce and tomato and ketchup and mustard and a sesame seed bun <laughs> i think that's what how they make it there's like you know i don't know 800 900 a thousand calories or so in that sandwich but if you replace the quarter pound beef burger with a quarter pound black bean patty and you replace the cheese with, uh, 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 I don't know, with nothing. with nothing or with even with a plant based cheese and you replace the bacon with nothing and you, and you put your lettuce and tomato and you put on your sesame seed bun, that same sandwich that looks like the same quantity, it, it's like going to occupy the same amount of space in your stomach but it's only going to be 400 calories if that, uh, because these, like we talked about before, these foods are less calorically dense, more nutrient dense. So calorically speaking, we are totally gypped when we go out to eat at a restaurant. And we kind of work around this by maybe eating a little bit beforehand, uh, maybe eating a little bit afterhand. It's not uncommon for us to come home and just chomp down a whole sweet potato out of the refrigerator for dessert or something like that just to you know fill up on the starch that our cells are really craving and uh, so you know we just wanted to introduce the fact that you know yeah yeah we're, we're 
and for that reason, and many other reasons, we don't eat out that much. And we recommend people who are on a healing journey not to eat out at, that much. It's expensive. It's not optimally healing food. You know, you can do better for yourself in your own kitchen. Yes. Um, I actually have three things I want to oh, talk gosh. about briefly. All right. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can even remember them. Well, the first one is that for people, also for people who aren't eating a whole food plant-based diet, like we mentioned in the very beginning, I usually see this with people who are eating more of a, I don't know, a quote unquote healthy whole food diet where they have some chicken and some broccoli and they try to stay low carb and and they're really restricted of their calories they want to lose weight they eat around a thousand calories a day and they're like why am i not losing weight well also for these people the issue also is that you're not eating enough and your metabolism is disrupted and you actually need to eat more in order to lose weight so I just wanted to say that there. Because caloric restriction is a stress of the body. Mm -hmm. Stress of the body means cortisol, all the, all the other stress hormones. These hormones cause weight retention. So this should be liberating to all the dieters out there, right? Okay, the other thing I wanted to say is that this might raise a lot of flags of skepticism to some of the listeners out there when we talk about all these fruits, all these starches, and your mind might go to, wait, but doesn't that cause diabetes? And so no. we have a really great <laughs> podcast episode with Robbie Barbero. Mindful diabetic Robbie. Mindful we diabetic Robbie, who is reversing hundreds of people's diabetes. I think plenty of thousands at this point. Probably thousands with a either starch based or fruit based or combination of those two diet. So go listen to that episode if you are skeptical. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I wanted to ask you, Ben, is if you wanted, I, maybe you don't want to, but I remember you were telling me about um, the great work of Dr. Vickers and how he was explaining yeah. how he gives his patients so many calories. Yeah, well, that's kind of where we started this conversation. You know, um, he he was he made some posts dr patrick vickers we did an interview with him as well i forget the the episode number but he's a gerson therapy practitioner gerson like juicing and whole foods uh, whole food plant based no oils no salt things like that for reversing cancer and other chronic diseases and he has been running weight loss retreats where he talks about how he is feeding his people up usually 3000 calories or so of foods in the form of whole foods and also juices. And people are losing weight very rapidly because their cells are being optimized. Wait, so these are not the cancer patients. These no, are... the, no, you don't want, you don't want cancer patients <laughs> to, to, lose, to weight. lose weight. No, you want people who are obese and have, uh, you know, disease related to their obesity to lose weight. And that's exactly what the, the Gerson diet does as well, which is a whole food plant-based diet with lots of juices that turn on the cell's ability to convert fuel into cellular energy. And that cellular energy is used to heal the body. And it's also used to turn on the metabolism in a way that releases excess weight that has been stored for years or decades. Right. So it's a, it comes back to the point of regulating metabolism, turning on the metabolism by fueling the body properly, which is done on a whole food plant-based diet, regardless of the amount of calories that are consumed. Great. Yeah. Well, if this brought up any questions for any of the listeners out there, know that we're always available for... A to have a conversation with you. Uh, you can email us. And we do complimentary 15 minute consultations with any new or curious clients. And we do consult with people all around the world. And if you are really like us, geeking out about nutrition and want to dive deep to understand things really at the foundational layer, I don't, the foundational level, just deep understanding. If you want to deepen your understanding of nutrition and all other things related to holistic health and healing, we encourage you to check out our new online course called Medicinal Living. And you can find out more information about that at www.altered.health course. And then once again, reminding you, if you 
are curious and interested in pr putting this into practice soon, we're offering a cleanse that is, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's a food-based cleanse. It's not restrictive. We're not counting calories. We're not doing anything like that. We're just optimizing cellular function, optimizing detoxification. And if you want more information about that, it's community.altered.health slash fall dash cleanse. We'll yes. put links uh, at the podcast page and our facebook and our yeah. instagram yeah you you can find it You'll and if you can't like just email info at alter.health we're throwing a lot of words and letters and websites at you so yeah Sorry. But, but what i want to say is there's going to be a lot of fruit and a lot of potatoes in this cleanse so if you want to give what we we're talking about today a real trying shot this would be a great opportunity to do yeah. so yeah yep totally <laughs> so on that note we send you on your day and appreciate you. We appreciate you so much for tuning in to another episode of Alter Your Health Live. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe, rate, and review. Leave, leave a comment or some feedback in some way. And maybe you know someone out there who is restricting food, thinking that they're trying to get healthy, and maybe they would benefit from connecting with this information to put them on a track that might be more enjoyable, sustainable, and really pointing them in direction of their truest optimal health. So send this episode to them. The cleanse starts September 23rd. I, also, don't, yeah. I don't know if we mentioned that. It, it does. And <laughs> you can find all sorts of more information. You know where to find it. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Peace and love.